Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, ranking members and vice chairs. Uh, thank you for the members of the committee. I'm here today to testify about two bills. One is uh, SB 76 and one is um, HB 5682. Uh, regarding the bill to defund the uh, mileage tax study, much has been said about it. A couple things that haven't. Uh, first off, um, I, as, as uh, some of the other members have said, um, most people seem to be against it. I've yet to find anybody in my district or in this building who will admit to being for it, yet it seems to be moving ahead anyway. Um, it, either it's got its own legs and its own, making its own decisions, or uh, some people are for it and just aren't admitting it. Um, but I represent a very rural district. And a mileage tax would very heavily, uh, disproportionately affect people in rural districts. Um, many people in the cities can walk downstairs and go get groceries and go get diapers. In my district, you have to get in your car and you have to drive 15 miles or so in order to get a pack of, of diapers. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're really, you know, by, by implementing this, we would be putting a much heavier burden onto the people in the rural areas. Um, there are uh, much better ways to address this. Um, you know, there are obvious problems with, with uh, privacy. There are obvious problems with, um, you know, how it would be implemented, the cost and all that. But um, the fact is that I, I have not seen anybody who's in favor of it, and it's moving forward anyway. Um, but I, I did mostly come to talk about HB 5682. Connecticut imposes a very, very significant fee on the manufacturers of travel trailers, much, much higher than any other state in the nation. And there are many manufacturers who are just refusing to pay it, and therefore companies that sell trailers in this state cannot sell those brands. Um, are joining states and the states around the country charge up to perhaps three or four hundred dollars. Um, Connecticut, it's twenty three hundred dollars. We're the only state in the nation that has such a fee. And what it's doing is it's preventing business, it's preventing uh, dealerships from selling these products, and it's preventing us from getting the, the benefit of that commercial activity. And the, the way the initial uh, bill proposal is drafted, it, it actually says to, to exempt those manufacturers from regulations. In fact, that if, if this was able to move forward, I would work on it to amend that to essentially um, reduce the fee and, and reduce the, the specific regulations that affect um, those, those specific products. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your comments. Um, any questions? Obviously, we've heard. Okay. And, the and mileage. just I, I, I would say one more thing. I do think it's important that we're, we're talking about spending $300,000 on a study for something nobody wants. And at the same time, we're also talking about taking $300,000 away from the military honors of, of our veterans. And I do think that we should really focus that money where it's needed. On, on giving our veterans a, a, um, a respectful uh, honors um, with, with the proper funding. Thank you. Yeah, and with, with that comment, excuse me, Representative, that we, uh, no one in this, I think, in this room is saying that we shouldn't properly uh, fund our veterans. Understood. I, I've never even heard that in this room. So I just want to be very clear about that. Uh, I understand. It's not, it's not the Transportation Committee that's figuring on taking right. that money. However, the, the, uh, however the, the, the state government is talking about funding with about the same amount of money a well, study again, that... With all due respect, that, that can go to anything, though. Anything oh, I understand. So I, I, not to try to, I'm not going to debate this with you, but I don't like the fact that hearing that you know, the 
transportation the transportation committee has never done something to take one funding away from another source of funding i, I understand there's many programs out there that we all wish that we had monies for <laughs> to do that so again i don't even know if there's money in place for this funding for the vehicle mileage tax all right and but again i just want to be perfectly clear that that is not the scope of this committee and nor will it ever be the scope of this committee well, uh, cl clearly funding that particular program is not before this committee and probably will never be before this committee. However, as you see behind me, there are an awful lot of veterans um, who are interested in making sure that that program is fully funded and believe that the, the money that's going to the study can be used for that purpose. And I, w and, I would support that. And, and, and again, to my point, then they, you know, with all due respect, they better go to every committee meeting there is out there because there's going to be many cuts in regards to that and they should be there also energized and ready to go because this isn't the only one that's talking about cuts every programs out there is talking about cuts not to say that theirs is invalid or not valid but what i'm saying is though there's other programs that people want their monies for certain issues and we can we're not going to politicize this in regards to veterans versus transportation or vice versa that is not the scope of this committee. That, that, that issue should be in front of the Veterans Committee with all due respect and talked about there. I sit on the Veterans Committee. Well, I understand there are six different bills before a Veterans Committee to do just that. And, and a, as you say, I would encourage uh, the, the, the members of the audience that, that are here to also uh, speak to that committee. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I represent Dubitsky. Uh, thank you for your testimony. I, I'm curious about uh, the uh, the bill you proposed that you were talking about. I just want to be just some points of clarification. So, it, if if there's a company in Connecticut that manufactures a utility trailer, they have to obtain a, a manufacturer's license and pay. Would you say twenty three hundred dollars? Uh, every manufacturer, whether they're in Connecticut or uh, out of the state. Oh, if they're going to sell in Connecticut. Correct. Okay. Any, any manufacturer that, m that makes trailers that are going to be <coughs> sold in Connecticut, uh, before they can be sold in Connecticut, they have to obtain this license and pay the fee. So, I mean, is it, uh, I would assume then, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, though, that if someone were to purchase a uh, utility trailer with a braking system, it would be more expensive to purchase one in the state of Connecticut versus a state where that license is lower? Is that correct or not? Um, presumably yes, but the, the more important issue is that the manufacturers are simply refusing to sell okay. in Connecticut because they don't want to pay the fee. Because every other state's fee is a fraction of what ours is. So people would be buying it, say Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, exactly. as to Connecticut. Okay. All right, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.